The purpose of this video is to give you a general idea of what to expect if you are referred for a gastroscopy. The procedures described in this program may vary from one clinic to another. The details of how you should prepare your intestines for the gastroscopy may also be different from what your doctor told you to do. Always follow your doctor's instructions. Your doctor may have referred you for a procedure called a gastroscopy to look through your mouth, down your esophagus, and into your stomach and the upper part of your small bowel. A gastroscopy is done using what's called a gastroscope, which is a long, thin, black tube that can be inserted through the mouth and then it goes down and looks at the esophagus, which is the swallowing tube. It can look at the stomach and then the top part of what's called the small intestine or duodenum to look for evidence of inflammation or abnormalities and to see if there's any reason why you may be having the symptoms that you do. Now, the advantage of uh, a gastroscopy over other investigations is that it allows the gastroenterologist to look directly at the lining of the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract. It allows the gastroenterologist to take what are called biopsies or little tissue samples that can then be uh, brought out at the gastroscope and sent off to the lab for examination using a microscope and that allows us to identify if there's any inflammation or abnormal cells uh, in the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract. The other thing about a gastroscopy is that it can allow the gastroenterologist to actually treat abnormalities. So uh, in some cases, a patient may have a bleeding ulcer and the gastroenterologist can then use the gastroscope to try and cauterize or prevent the bleeding. It also allows the gastroenterologist, for example, to treat other conditions. For example, if there is a narrowing in the esophagus, uh, this can then be stretched or dilated so that, for example, swallowing becomes easier. There are a number of reasons why uh, someone might need a gastroscopy. Uh, the major reason is to investigate or to test for or look into the cause of symptoms which the physician thinks may be due to uh, an abnormality in the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract. There are a number of specific conditions or diseases that affect the uh, esophagus, the stomach and the duodenum and these can be examined for very carefully and very uh, precisely using gastroscopy. And some of the conditions, for example, are esophagitis or inflammation of the esophagus, which is part of what's called gastroesophageal reflux disease. One can look for ulcers in the stomach, which may be caused by uh, pain-killing uh, medications such as ASA or NSAIDs, that's non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Some ulcers are caused by a bacterial infection in the stomach with a bacterium called Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori or HP for short and this is an infection which causes ulcers and the reason for finding it is that if one cures the infection then usually the ulcer disease is cured as well. One can also look for inflammation that may be caused by other conditions and sometimes also one may need to take tissue samples or biopsies from the small intestine to look for a condition called celiac disease which is an abnormality or inflammation in the small intestine caused by an allergy to wheat that's taken in the diet. Your stomach needs to be empty of food and liquids before you have your gastroscopy. If your gastroscopy is scheduled for the morning, you can't have food or drinks after midnight the night before. If your gastroscopy is scheduled for the afternoon, stop eating and drinking six hours before your appointment. Patients need to bring a family member or a friend with them only if they're medicated. If uh, they're going to have the procedure done with no medication, then they don't need accompaniment. When a patient first arrives uh, in an endoscopy unit, the procedure will vary a little bit from one unit to another, and it may also vary depending on whether the patient has seen a gastroenterologist beforehand. 
In some cases, the family physician will have sent the patient directly to the endoscopy unit after discussion with the gastroenterologist. And in this case, the gastroenterologist will want to talk to the patient to make sure that he or she knows why the procedure is being done, uh, to explain what the procedure will involve, to explain some of the risks related to the procedure, and also to check that there are no allergies, that there are no uh, medications the patient's taking that, that may interfere with the gastroscopy, and to make sure that the patient understands what uh, is going to happen. In other cases, the patient will already have seen the gastroenterologist in consultation or in the office beforehand, and in this case, things may go a little more quickly, and the nurse will then just check some of the details to make sure that nothing has changed since the patient was first seen by the gastroenterologist. I'm going to put the bed up a little bit more. In the treatment room, we ask the patient to sit on the stretcher, and we will put a finger probe on their finger, which measures their oxygen level and their pulse, and a blood pressure cuff on their arm. Pressure cuff. It's going to get a bit tight. If the patient is going to have uh, intravenous sedation, then uh, an intravenous cannula is placed. That's a little, very fine tube that goes into one of the veins, usually in the arm or the back of the hand, and that's to allow sedation to be given during the procedure. Now, not everybody needs sedation, so the uh, intravenous cannula may not be put in place. At this point, the doctor will come in and he will uh, greet the patient. Uh, he will again explain what is going to happen briefly, and uh, then he will talk about the complications and the risks and benefits of the exam, and then he will ask for a consent. As part of the consent process, the gastroenterologist will also explain alternatives to the gastroscopy. It's important to understand that gastroscopy is basically a very safe procedure. It's important, as with all procedures, to understand that there may be some risks. There is occasionally some damage to the esophagus, possibly a little tear or graze as the scope goes down, uh, but that's virtually unheard of. And then, in some cases, there's a risk, for example, of bleeding when biopsies are taken, little tissue samples are taken, or if uh, polyps, little pimples or growths are removed from the lining of the stomach or duodenum. But again, these are very rare, and in most cases, the bleeding can be stopped or the complications can be dealt with during the course of the procedure. The risk of bleeding may be increased if you're taking any medication that can thin your blood, like Coumadin, Aspirin, or Advil. Always be sure to tell your doctor about all the medications you're taking, even if you bought them over the counter at the pharmacy without a prescription. When the consent is signed, their throat is frozen with a uh, medication that uh, will make their throat feel numb. And then a plastic mouthpiece is put between the teeth to protect our teeth and our instruments. And the scope is then introduced. With the patient lying on the left-hand side, particularly if they've not had sedation, they will often have the opportunity to watch the procedure. Uh, on a, a monitor on a TV screen so that they can see what's going on and almost invariably during the procedure the gastroenterologist will talk to the patient and will explain what's going on so even if you don't remember it after the sedation the physician is usually explaining to you uh, as he goes along or she goes along uh, what he's seeing and what he's doing in terms of taking tissue samples or taking samples from uh, other parts of the gastrointestinal tract in general, a gastroscopy will take somewhere about five to seven minutes. If a number of tissue samples or biopsies are being taken, then the procedure may last a little longer, but it's rare for a gastroscopy to last for more than 10 minutes. For most patients, probably the most difficult time is right at the start of the gastroscopy as they're just swallowing the tube for the first time. And once that's over, the first 30 to 60 seconds, the patients become accustomed to having the tube in the back of their throat. They can then concentrate on taking uh, shallow, slow breaths. And once that period's over, then most patients do extraordinarily well and uh, will say at the end that, in fact, it was nothing like as bad as they had expected. What happens after the gastroscopy will vary from one clinic to another. Once the procedure has finished, the patient's so-called vital signs, that is their blood pressure and oxygen concentration in their blood and their heart rate will be checked by the nurse before they leave the endoscopy suite or the endoscopy procedure room. 
What happens after that depends a little bit on whether the patient has had sedation. If the patient has had sedation, then they will usually remain in a recovery area uh, for observation just to make sure that the sedation wears off properly. And certainly, if they've had sedation, then there should be somebody to accompany them home or to drive them home if necessary. Uh, for those patients who've not had sedation, then they can usually get up uh, immediately after the procedure and they're able then to go home. After the procedure, because of the throat spray, uh, the throat will remain numb and it may be a little difficult to swallow. So patients are advised not to eat or drink anything, usually for about an hour after the procedure. Usually after the procedure, the gastroenterologist or the endoscopist will tell the patient if there are any specific findings or abnormalities that have been discovered at the gastroscopy. Uh, this is sometimes a little difficult because after sedation, uh, it may be difficult to remember what has been said. Uh, for this reason, it's often helpful to have somebody with the patient so that they too can listen to the explanation if necessary. In any event, if biopsies or tissue samples have been taken, it'll take several days for all of the results to come back. And usually what then happens is that the endoscopist will schedule a follow-up appointment so that all of the results can then be uh, discussed in detail and discussed often uh, with the results of other tests that may also have been done. Again, depending on the clinic you go to, you might receive the results of your gastroscopy from the gastroenterologist who performed the procedure, either by phone or in person, or from the doctor who referred you. In summary, the major benefits of gastroscopy are that it is a very accurate and very safe test for uh, looking into the cause of symptoms that may be caused by problems in the esophagus, in the stomach, or the duodenum. Um, it's a very good test compared with, for example, x-rays because it allows the endoscopist to look directly uh, at the lining of the upper gastrointestinal tract. It allows the endoscopist to take tissue samples or biopsies to see if there's any inflammation or other abnormalities. Um, and it's a very good way of uh, either identifying uh, a cause for symptoms that can be treated or for reassuring the patient and the physician that there is no significant abnormality or significant cause for the patient's symptoms. And this is then very important for allowing the physician then to prescribe or suggest the most appropriate treatment to help the patient and help their symptoms.